male classmates, schoolmates were wondering like, why on earth did I decide to join the military? She must be quite crazy to do this. Hi, I'm Lee San. I'm a Member of Parliament for Sembawang GRC. When I was young, I always thought I would become an engineer because I was a curious kid. I loved to open up gadgets at home, open up the alarm clock, the telephone and even the toilet system to see what's inside there. That was a way of exploring and learning. Didn't imagine I'll end up being a search and rescue pilot saving lives. My dad is a more open-minded and he's like, okay, give you a lot of freedom, I support you in whatever you do. My mom is like, okay, just don't cross the red lines, stay within the boundary. So I think that gave me quite a lot of space to really explore and yet don't get into trouble. That is how I grew up as a person, able to have that courage and confidence to try out new things. In my early 20s, I was very adventurous. I traveled around the world in my backpack. I felt like I was a global citizen. I was able to travel to different parts of the world learn about different cultures, different places, try different food. Even though I didn't have too much money, I had time on my hands. When I was doing my A-levels, I really wanted to go overseas to study. The SAF at that time was launching, I think it was a second year, scholarship for women officers. And one of my friends thought I fit the bill and encouraged me to apply for that. Amongst the different combat roles, I thought being a pilot would be the most exciting. The flying training is actually a very long process, almost two years at least, before we could earn our wings. First flight was quite nerve-wracking because there's so many steps from getting into the aircraft to before you land. Those days, instructors were really fierce. It can be quite scary. We always have a joke to say that when the cockpit closes, the instructor becomes the devil. Those days, we hardly had any female pilots. And in fact, I didn't even know females could join the Air Force as pilots. Around me, our male classmates, schoolmates, they were wondering like, why on earth did I decide to join the military when they had to be conscripted to serve their NS? Some naysayers amongst them and thinking like, okay, she must be quite crazy to do this. But by and large, I think most people I would say are quite supportive because the people around me know that I'm quite independent, I know what I'm doing, and I'm quite outgoing as a person. 2006, I was asked to go for an interview, not knowing that they had in mind to have full-time female ADCs. I was shortlisted to have an interview with the president himself, the late Mr. S.R. Narden. It was quite an experience going alone into the president's office, having this one-to-one -one interview. The most memorable experience was National Day Parade. We had to accompany the president upon arrival into the parade, doing our slow march as he inspected the parade format. Prior to the actual parade, we had spent at least a dozen weeks to practice and make sure on the actual day, nothing goes wrong. So it was really nerve-wracking at first because there are hundreds of thousands of people watching us live and I'm glad that all the efforts to train, to prepare, all paid off. When I decided to leave RSAF, I was nearing the end of my 12-year pilot bond. So I thought, well, the retirement was 45 years old and I was 35. With only 10 years to go, it's really too early to stop work. And I also wanted to learn more of how things work in the corporate sector. Before I decided to transit into a different role, I would consult my dad because he's very wise and he always gives me good advice. And at the end of the day, I always feel very comforted, confident, and I should just take up the challenge and go for it. So I decided that at 35, I would leave the SAF and join Changi Airport Group. I was a rookie when I joined the corporate sector. The senior was not too sure whether I would be able to live up to the role. As so I learned the ropes, I overcome the initial transition challenges. I had about two good years serving as a volunteer and kind of have a sense of how things work. When I was a candidate, I thought I should just take things in my stride and just continue to build on the good work that's been laid down by my predecessor, continue to work with our network of volunteers and partners in the community. People say that Singaporeans like to complain, but I personally don't think that way, at least in my encounters during house visits. 
Some of my residents are really, really nice. They would offer us fresh muffins that they just baked and they give compliments to our cleaners. For example, they've done a good job keeping the estate clean. They let us know as good feedback. So I, I really appreciate our residents for being very positive and very encouraging to us. As an MP, we also have different roles and responsibilities. And for me, one of them is becoming the president of the Singapore Table Tennis Association. Being able to have this opportunity to lead our table tennis team, to fly our flag high in major competitions around the world, and helping our young players unleash their potential, I feel that is a real privilege, a real honour to be able to step up to this role. I'm a, quite a persistent person, so what does not kill you makes you stronger. This mantra is a good reminder that we should never give up and keep trying, knowing that one day we have that confidence to overcome the hardest of all challenges. Because the moment you give up, the next time when you meet another challenge, that same negative thought will come in and you may end up giving up every time you hit a roadblock. I think a purposeful life is about being able to make a positive impact to other people. All of us have a limited time span in this world. And I feel that with the talents, with the resources given to us, we should make the best use of that and not let time be wasted. Becoming Lee Sun is taking up meaningful challenges and giving my best. <laughs>